morning, morning, morning. It is Wednesday. It is the 2022 version of April the 27th. And you're back here with me, Sean Butler at the Spurs Talk Show alongside Bugsy Malone. <sighs> How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Tell you what, God woke up this morning and decided to make the local weather the way I like my con carne. Chilly. It is nasty. <sighs> and I'm not a tie entirely appropriately covered for the occasion. Never mind, never mind. What is going on? Before we get started, you can find me at Spurs Talk Show on Twitter, at Spurs Talk Show on Instagram, and of course, Spurs Talk Show on YouTube, hashtag no spaces, hashtag all one word, because we don't want you to find those thieving gits at San Antonio Spurs, their Spurs Talk Show, hashtag zero content for four years, hashtag subscribers still going up. What is going on, people? What is going on? Anyway, enough with the negs. Let's get on with the news. What is happening today? Uh, well, a little bit of transfer news. Not a lot of other things I make to discuss. First and foremost, yesterday, there was a, an article that came out from the, the leading Turkish newspaper that Tottenham were looking at Ridvan Yilmaz, the Beziktas, left back, left wing back. Um, Rumoured to be valued at somewhere between eight and 10 million euros. Because I guess, I don't know if there's any truth to it, but um, you know, I'm guessing the transfer mill will always start turning when you see a manager flip flop between one of your choices and the other every week. And so now they're trying to start a narrative that Conte is not happy with uh, either of his options, or at least one of the options. And you know what? I can understand why. It's a weird one with um, the left wing back, isn't it? Someone made a really interesting point. I forget who it was. Someone made an interesting point in the comments on one of the shows I was doing this week that we're putting a lot of effort and focus and attention on how bad Emerson Royale is and he uh, certainly certainly isn't the best. However, they were saying maybe more of the attention on our drop in form could be aimed more towards the left hand side in that we don't really offer a much down there either and we could and should be able to do more with what we have. And I tend to agree, you know? There's lots of lots of hate and venom spat at Emerson, you know? And and like, no, I'm not saying that the hate and the venom is, is is correctly aimed, but the disappointment, the frustrations, definitely, you know, he does, he does deserve some of the focus because, you know, his performances have been woeful, but you could, you could easily make the same argument recently about Cessignon and Regalon. Whenever either of them have played, neither of them have looked uh, interested, impactful, or contributing to an overall team performance. So, um, no surprise to me that the, that the news is out that we're looking for a left back. Yilmaz, I don't know much about him. I looked up his his uh, highlight reel. He looked okay on his highlight reel, but you know how much can you take from three minutes or four minute clips? Um, you know, put together, and, and it's in the Turkish league, so I don't know if there's any truth to it. Following that article yesterday, an article came out this morning saying that Stuttgart were entering the race to sign this fella because it's more and more likely that their guy, their left back, Borna Sosa, who's got a really cool name, I like that name, that he might be leaving Stuttgart and one of the names that have been touted as a potential suitor for Borna Sosa is Tottenham. 
So, and he's valued more towards the kind of 17, 18 million region. 22 year old, I think, from, from memory. Um, again, you know, the stats don't look brilliant. I think he's played like 22 times this season, but again, looked at the highlight reel. Again, highlight reels, you know, everyone can have a highlight reel. I'm sure if you were to clip 10 seconds from every show that I've done, it would make me look a lot better than I actually am at discussing Tottenham. So that's the problem with highlight reels. Um, and I haven't seen him play enough in real time at Stuttgart to know if he's any good. So not much more to say about that. But just thought I'd mention it. Because that's what we do here. We talk about whatever's going on on the morning walk. So we're apparently looking for a left back. Who would you like to see if we are now adding another name to another position that needs to be improved upon in the summer? Who would you like to see come in at left wing back? Would you like to see someone of the £15 million range? Or would you like us to go and spend a larger slice of whatever budget we have to improve that position? I'm guessing most of you in the comments would say it'd be nice to improve, but there's other positions that, are, that desire or demand rather higher attention. If so, let me know which positions. In fact, let's play a game. If you were... Conte Paratici and Daniel Levy turns around and says we've got to pay off the money or some of the money on the Romero deal, we've got to pay off some of the money on um, Brian Hill or Emerson, blah 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 we've also got to pay off outstanding debts on Sanchez and Lo Celso and end on Bele and all that crap right maybe we have to go and pay for Kulisevsky as well up front early doors if you Think that's necessary but net of all of that you've got a hundred and ten million quid budget and then whatever other money you can get from player sales well some of that will go back into the budget but others will go to running costs but let's just for argument's sake say you've got 120 million quid and we need to sign a backup goalie a right wing back, at least one. Some more central midfielders. Arguably, ideally, someone who can support Harry Kane as a forward. Maybe back up to him or someone that can compete. And then certainly some centre backs as well. One or two, depending on how you feel about Dyer and Davies. My question to you is, do you split that money evenly and go 20 million pound a piece on six players? Do you go 50 million pound on one right back, one right wing back, or 50 million or 40 million on a centre back? Where do you take the lion's share, if you want to take the lion's share, and allocate it? Let me know in the comments how you would like to see us divvy up 120 million over five or six players and uh, you can even develop the comment if you like and tell us the names of which you would like us to go after. One of the names that has been mentioned recently is a player I would absolutely adore and love, be so, so excited to see in a Tottenham shirt, is Mr. De Vrij from Inter Milan. News come out this morning, not news come out this morning, but it was an article that was maybe recirculated this morning saying that Tottenham are massively interested. There's strong, strong interest in him from Inter Milan and that he's not against the idea, although his preferred option would be to stay at Inter. He just wants some clarification on why his contract hasn't been sorted out yet. I think he's only got one year left on his contract and so you know, if he's available, I mean, the article suggested it would cost 30 or 40 million euros to, to get him. So you could make the argument, hi guys, hi. you could make the argument that uh, with a year left on the contract and a 30, 29, 30 year old, you could get him for 20 million. Some people said even as little as 15 million on a recent stream I was on. 
And look, I would absolutely love him. I would absolutely adore that guy. I think he's a monster. Six foot two. He can play at the center of a back three um, more than he can on either side. But I think he has got that adaptability to play on the left as well. And you know, at Inter Milan, one of the reasons why maybe he hasn't had the contract sorted out is because Inter Milan have got, you know, an absolute world-class defence and world-class options in defence. They've already, they've still got Bastoni, who plays on the left of a three, who's uh, just a, you know, one of the best up-and-coming talents in centre-backs in the world. They've got Skriniar, who, you know, has often been touted as a Tottenham signing. Um, and you know what, the other names have escaped me right now. Is it DeMarco? De, De I'm not sure. Uh, but they've got two or three other centre-backs as well. And if you look at their, if you look at Inter Milan's team sheets over the last, you know, 10 games, De Vrij hasn't been on, I'm not sure if he's been injured, but he's not been on that many of them. I think he's only played like 25 games this season or 24 games this season. I'm not sure if that's injury related or if that is because he's dropped down the pecking order. But it's no disgrace if you have when, they, when they've got so many defensive options that they do. You'd imagine that Inter Milan could probably afford to, if they wanted to raise funds for whatever their interests are in the summer, then one of the ways to do that would be by allowing De Vrij to, uh, to leave now rather than, rather than uh, losing for free in 12 months time. Um, any other news out? Yes, there's one other piece of news out today that Newcastle, actually before we get on to that, let me know what your thoughts are on De Vrij. Let me know if you know the Italian leagues better than I do. I don't watch too much of the Italian leagues. Um, so I'm going off of uh, what I've read and what I've heard from people that, um, that, that do uh, have a lot more knowledge of the Italian league. People like Iggy, for example, at uh, Tottenham away, he's, uh, oh yeah, he's a um, massive, massive aficionado when it comes to Italian football, so I, I look to lean on people like him. And also Ben Coffey at the coffee shop, the Co Kaufman, uh, the coffee company. He's a big Italian football fan as well, so I listen to what they say more than, more than just trust my own judgment. But let me know in the comments what you think, whether De Vrij is appealing to you, what the sort of price range we'll be looking for and how likely it is that we could get hold of them. Because um, I'd imagine the, you know, we wouldn't be able to get someone like the Stoney. Uh, I think the money that they want for him would be, would consume far too much of whatever budget we have. Last bit of news, ladies and gentlemen, last bit of news before I let you go for the day is, how long have I been talking for? 14 minutes. It's a long one, sorry. Um, last bit of news is our old boy Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, Ellie, Ellie's Viking love. Um, apparently Newcastle are after him. Apparently they're willing to pay £30 million for his services. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, guys. Bugs, we're going to go back. Bye-bye. It's a lot of money for his services. You know, I personally love Pierre Amor Hoiberg, and I know he splits a lot of the uh, opinion on, on the Tottenham community, within the Tottenham community. A lot of people think he's massively uh, overhyped. A lot of people think he quietly goes about his job and he's pivotal and incredibly influential in our midfield. I think that, you know, both could be true. There's, there's games that happen where he goes missing. I think he's probably peaked. Like he, he's not someone that's gonna get much better than what he already does. I think he's someone who does put his heart and soul in every, every game as best he can. I just think that maybe his, you know, the levels that you could get from Hoiberg are not, not much higher than what we've already seen. And 30 million quid's a lot of money that you could add to the, add to the transfer budget and with an entire summer to kind of go and feast upon the free transfers that are out there of which there's quite a lot of midfielders um, 
or just go after, you know, just some different players, then 30 million quid would be, would be really healthy. I think he only cost like 10 million or 12 million or something a couple of years ago. And he's been a great servant for Tottenham, so I'm happy for him to stay. I like the guy. I think he's a great value. Uh, sorry, great, uh, a great, great guy to have around the squad. You can see he's not afraid also to call out players on the pitch when they're not putting in a shift and riles people up. He's a bit of a lion, and I like that. I do like that, and I appreciate him. So I'm happy for him to stay. But I would like to see us improve the midfield level next year to the point, or in the summer rather, to the point where not only do we have more more players to choose from, but where the quality of the average player is a lot higher. So if he, if he stays, I don't want him to be a starter necessarily next year. I want him to be a squad guy. You know, I think Oliver Skip will be someone that has got far higher levels and far higher potential to, 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 to grow into as long as his injury is you know, resolved. And obviously I want Harry Winks to go. But the negatives of, of letting him go are that, you know, if you're gonna get rid of Harry Winks as well, and then suddenly you've got a lot, a lot of work to do in the summer. You're gonna to have to go and sign three or four midfielders. So, you know, it's a lot of work and the summer does fly by very quickly. So there's a lot of risk there, you know, and if you do let go of him to a, a very early and then other teams are aware of how desperate you're gonna to be to improve the numbers in midfield and they, they make negotiations difficult and we, maybe miss out on a couple of players because other teams who are going through a rebuild get aggressive like Manchester United for example they're going to be super aggressive in the market this summer as our Newcastle you know as our other teams we're competing with um, if you let Hoiberg go early then you might end up with another situation where we're stuck with Harry Winks because we can't let two of them go before we've replaced and that would be god Something to, something to seriously be afraid of. Imagine another season with Harry Winks. So, for me, I'm happy to let him go, but only on the proviso that we've already let go of Harry Winks, and it's for decent money, and we reinvest that money and buy three or four midfielders to accompany what we already have, and and then I wish him well. I think he'd do a great job at Newcastle. Um, but I'd also be happy for him to stay. What was you think? I'm rambling, I'm gonna wrap this up now. That's about all the news that's out today. Let me know what you think about Hoiberg. Would you let him go? If you'd let him go? Are you happy for him to go to Newcastle? A team that could potentially be, you know, a threat next year? Um, what's the money? What's the price? 30 million? Seems like a decent deal, doesn't it? Trebled your return on him. Um, let me know. Last thing I'll say guys is it's always a pleasure talking to you and it's always wonderful when I get through most of the dog walk just by talking to a blue screen. I love it, love it! You can catch me on the channel doing another live stream. We did one last night or yesterday afternoon. A quick little impromptu one with Coover and Baza from Shelfside. And that was awesome fun. We're gonna do a lot more live streams on the channel. I haven't been doing enough of them and I love doing them when I do them so please hit the notification bell when you also hit the subscribe and the like if you haven't already please do that and uh, you can find out when we're going live and join the conversation in real time. Let me know your thoughts on everything we've spoken about, left backs, the budget, how to allocate it, De Vrij and Pierre Mohoiberg. I love you, I'll see you all soon and as always guys, as always, bye bye.